All right, so in this section we'll be talking about uh, discrete motion sensors. We'll start off by talking about the inductive proximity sensor, which is used to detect metals and m ferrous metals, uh, those with iron, and gets detected a little bit easier. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, what you'll see in the bottom left-hand corner is that Lab Volt 6375BO sensor. It's very similar. We've got the uh, sensor on the end of a you know articulating arm there and then um, it connects up to a relay now as far as the actual sensor it's an allen bradley 872c d5 np 18e2 uh, so it's a inductive sensor that operates between 10 and 30 volts dc uh, will be operating at 24 volts dc uh, as our control voltage now, the actual sensor can handle up to 200 milliamps of load. It's a PNP, uh, normally open, but uh, it will be used to trigger the relay there. The re relay or sourcing relay ha can handle up to 2 amps at 30 volts DC. So as far as that 18 in the uh, label there, the 18 is the width of this sensor. So there's comes in different widths. I think it's like one, two, six, or something. That's not maybe not one, but they do have some really small ones. Um, the uh, depth of it is actually 65 millimeters, and the idea is that if you loosen up that nut, you can actually adjust it uh, because of that five millimeter distance. You might need to move that in a little bit further or back. Sorry about that. So. Um, as far as the response on this, it actually is dependent on the size and the distance. And so what's kind of interesting is how the inductive sensor works. It's actually a DC, you know, we're running DC here, but it actually has to go through and creating an oscillating signal. So it's actually going to create some alternating current on a, um, a ferrous coil. And what happens is that that ferrous coil is going to set up this magnetic field. And what will happen is this things go through that magnetic field it's going to potentially perturb that and that's what we'll we'll sense there so uh, there it is I thought it was on a previous side so, so five millimeters is the maximum distance there uh, what will happen is is on the back side of that sensor there's a red LED that allows us to know that the sensor has triggered now as far as that um, oscillating current that needs to be created is actually created at a, a thousand uh, Hertz so can it you know that that also kind of affects how fast it's actually going to respond. Now, this is just a general um, purpose. As I said, it's barrel mounted, a lot of the distance change there. Uh, so what will happen is, is in that five millimeter distance, uh, as your target moves closer and starts perturbing that um, space, what happens is there's an uh, oscillating response to that change in that uh, magnetic field. And what happens, the sensor kind of looks at that, and as that uh, field gets kind of pushed down because a piece of metal gets into it and it kind of affects that the, the magnetic field that was currently being generated, um, it will go through and trigger. And so on the right hand side, what that's kind of showing there is that there is kind of a, a, a margin of area there between the yellow and the orange, just like we kind of seen the yellow orange in the, um, in the optical sensors. We don't have a yellow and red orange LED, but the idea is that there's kind of a holding and then there's a release so what happens is something comes in it'll trigger it but it actually may stay in there a little longer as it as it starts to leave it and so maybe it got triggered at three but maybe stay open till about four and so there's a 10 percent hysteresis which means three mi three millimeters plus 10 percent would be 3.3 millimeters but that's kind of to just take that kind of rough there's this this kind of distance that it um kind of stay on and so uh, why we kind of mentioned that is you want a little bit of distance there uh, because as your target comes in, maybe it's just coming in between like 2.9 and 3.1. We don't want it to be bouncing on and off. So they add that a little additional release. So it has to exceed a little bit more uh, and not just have a, you know, a uh, on off location where it could just kind of bounce in between there so that's that's what allows the hysteresis to give us that extra space to keep it from um, having our relay you know go chattering back and forth um, so how this is kind of shown here on the right hand side maybe I should have gone to this slide a little earlier so that's what I mean by that little extra space so it may go through and the switch point when leaving is, is a little bit higher than approaching so maybe it triggers at three but 
releases at 3.3. We don't want to be triggering it um, you know, like 2.99 and 3.01 because it could just be triggering on and off. And because of that oscillation, remember I said it is 1,000 hertz, uh, we could have a real, you know, back and forth uh, on and off and on and off. So they actually add that little extra gap there to keep it from um, chattering back and forth. Now, how are these typically used? So on the right hand side, uh, what we could have is an inductive sensor detecting something on the top of a conveyor belt to detect as it's coming by. Um, now, depending on what, in this case, they're showing a, a bottle with some type of cap, depending on what kind of cap is on the top, it's kind of dependent on what uh, distance it's gonna be. We'll, we'll get to that in just a moment. Um, I was hoping to find a different image, but this was all kind of in one. That uh, inductive sensor is shown on top of the conveyor belt, but that optical sensor, I mean, sorry, inductive sensor could actually be under the belt. And it, uh, given the thickness of the belt, it might be able to detect that metal as it's coming across, uh, across the top of it as well. Um, a, a simple example here is on the left-hand side shows an elevator. There might be some type of um, metal that sticks out and the inductive sensor would tell it when it was aligned up with that. And so that would know when to, so as the elevator slows down, right, then it's going to just move slowly until that inductive sensor trips and then it knows it has gotten at the right distance, right? Because remember, it's, it's really close. It's, it's really sensitive. So that would allow you to get that alignment on the floor a little bit better. Now, as far as materials, um, it is tuned for mild steel and, and mild steel they just as a factor of one so that means that three millimeters now if it was brass the correction factor would be a half of that so uh, you'd have to be within 1.5 millimeters in order for go through and trigger it and so brass aluminum copper they don't have as they don't have iron in them and, and the as you know with transformers what best sets up uh, um, I can't remember what's it plus two electrons or whatever uh, so it, it or maybe it's just plus one I don't, I don't remember but um, it allows it uh, um, to set up that field a little bit easier than the other ones so a little more behind the stainless steel has a different type of um, uh, crystallized form that, that kind of limits some of that um, that ability to form magnetism so uh, what I'm going to do or oh, the, oh, I should, should, should mention there on the right hand side so they they do mention here that you could have two different parts. Now, I wish they had taken that inductive sensor and put it right in that gap area on the good one. So the idea is, is it passed by if that gap was there, it was good. But if it's it sensed something, then it would know that that gap, that that, that piece was upside down because that piece of metal showed up. So the, that's uh, uh, just kind of an example of, you know, maybe using it to detect uh, parts in different directions. Uh, so with that, let's go through and look at the sensor. I'm going to go through and transition over here. So what I've got is a, the wooden block that we've been using so far. Um, on this is just white, and you'll see that it doesn't trip it off. Um, I've got it set up here. Green is my normally closed, um, and then it's going to open up here uh, when it senses something. Oh, there's the wood side, the black side, so the color reflection doesn't affect it. Um, Right here is that uh, reflective end that doesn't trip it. And so now what I have is a, this is metal. It's actually a steel, mild steel. If I trip that, it trips it. And you'll see the red light come on the top there. Okay, so at about three millimeters here. Now what's interesting here is I've got stainless steel here. And if you remember the chart, it said that it was 85% of the distance. And if I move this in here, you'll see that it actually won't trip it. But if I lift it up just a little bit, it will trip it. So I'm right at the distance where I might have to go through. If I was detecting stainless steel, I might have to loosen that nut up on the bottom and lower the sensor a little bit further. Now, obviously, it's an articulating arm, so I could move it further down there. But, uh, and I don't know what kind of metal this is. Yeah, that's tripping it off. Looks like it might. Hmm, I doubt it's stainless steel. But, um, so that's the inductive sensor. Uh, as far as uh, what we're doing is trying to trip, detect on metal right and it's going to be at a very close distance so where are we going to use it it would be there um, you know another possibility is maybe it's used in a door frame and uh, maybe you've seen this before in the door frame it has a little like a metal chunk maybe you think it was a magnet up there and it's possible that sometimes they are magnets uh, uh, the difference being the reason that you would use a magnetic 
uh, in the door is because then your sensor would only be an on off sensor right as soon as the magnet tripped it would be turned on this is actually a three wire sensor where you actually have power coming to the sensor right to to build that um, uh, that field to, for detection there so um, I, I would sense tend to believe that you'd be less likely to see an inductive sensor back in a door frame because it's ch so much cheaper just to have the magnetic sensor and the magnetic is just you know uh, 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 like a lit limit read switch like we see on the pneumatics all right so that is um, one of the two sensors that we're going to look at that's the um, uh, uh, inductive proximity sensor and we'll see about getting the next one up here shortly